Hello and welcome to another video. Today I'll be talking about remeshing, why we do it, how we do it, and I'll be comparing Blender versus ZBrush and I'll also be using the Exercise plugin inside Blender to just show you what the best use is and just to compare the different applications. I'm using a shoe that I scanned in one of my previous videos in Metashape. It's 125 megabytes and it's already been uh, decimated inside Metaship, 33%. Start off with 10 million faces, so it should have around about 3 million faces. And the first challenge really for Blender is importing these large files and how long they take. So I'm just going to bring it in and then just time the result. So it takes around about 35 seconds to bring into Blender. The next thing we're going to do is to just do the another decimation within Blender itself. Just going into the modifiers here and choosing decimate from here and then doing 20% or 0 0.2 and then timing this. Takes about 27 seconds and then applying it takes a bit of time afterwards as well. So in total about just over one minute to do the decimation again. So into ZBrush now and importing the same mesh into ZBrush is almost instantaneous. It's basically about two or three seconds and it's there. Obviously pressing the edit button in ZBrush and positioning it taking a little bit longer. But once I've got that, I go into Decimation Master, pre-process and time that and see how long that takes. And then also do the decimate, which only takes a little bit longer. So in total, that taking about 29 seconds in ZBrush. So back into Blender and we're going to do some retopology. As you can see from this scan, I was very lazy and didn't take many photos of the inside and just got around the front. But I did kind of do this intentionally because it's left a massive hole in the heel and it's left a massive hole inside. And what retopology will do is hopefully help us to fill those with even sized polygons and give us a mesh that is going to be easier to sculpt because at the minute we've got lots of triangles here which are not good for UVing and they're not good for sculpting out some of these rough areas where we couldn't capture it correctly. Uh, the experts say the best way to do this is by hand and to redraw it by, with polygons, but we're just going to go across, over automated methods today and not manual retopology by hand. So the first thing I'm going to do is I need to fix these holes and the, the retopology doesn't work too well unless you do this first. So for me to do that, I actually use uh, a 3D print toolbox here activate that add-on and it should come in here and what I need to do is just close these holes and fix the non-manifold edges. So I go in there and just click make manifold and I should close those holes. Once I've done that, it should enable me to go in and try the various remeshing options. Now I'm using version 2.92 and you may not have all the remeshing options if you're using an older version. I'm just gonna turn off wireframe here and show you what it's done. Attempted some kind of fix there, which is not great, but we can fix that later in sculpting. So I'm just gonna go into the modifiers here and choose remesh. And the first one I think is the newest one is voxel. And we can change these voxel sizes. And I would recommend that you save prior to doing this because it can crash basically. And it can crash very quickly. And it's timed out on me a couple of times already. So. I would say, save before you do this. By bringing the voxel size down, we're bringing the number of faces up and we're effectively getting more detail. I'm gonna push this down to about 0 0.06. And this is giving us about 80,000 faces. And if we look at the wireframe, what we will see is a lot of quads. We do have this, these sort of weird patterns going across here, uh, which ZBrush doesn't do, but we do have evenly distributed mainly quads across the whole mesh. I'm just gonna see if I can push this again to 0 0.05. The tendency here is whenever you go lower, it will crash. So I have about 120,000 faces with this. And at this stage, let's see if we can do 0 0.04 without it dying. I've got 180,000 faces. I'm gonna take off the wireframe and that's actually not too bad. The bottom's a bit of a mess, but I'll show you the main reasons for us going to do this. Once I go into sculpting mode here, I should be able to smooth out these parts with far greater ease than what I could before. So if I just apply the smoothing brush to some of these areas, I should just be able to 
very easily smooth this. What I would need to do is to apply the remesh first. So let's apply that and then go into sculpting. And then I can smooth very easily these parts inside because of the new mesh we have. The workflow in ZBrush, which I'll show you later on, generally involves remeshing over and over again. I don't know of something that's as smooth in Blender. I could be wrong. Hit me up in the comments. You could probably cut out pieces like this and then re smoothen and so forth. But generally, for free software, this is good and I can work with it. Although I have had a couple of crashes in the process of making this video and it's just glitching out for no reason. But we will go with that for now. And I'm just going to show you some of the other options that allow us to remesh. I'm just going to go back on the history there a little bit. Prior to me applying the remesh, And just remove the remesh at this stage and go back to the original thing with the closed holes and then remesh again and this time show you some of the other options like blocks which gives me this kind of minecraft feature which is pretty cool but not really very useful for what i'm trying to do and again i can bring up the octree depth to give me more blocks so you can make some pretty cool minecraft shoes out of this but probably too many faces for that uh, so instead, I'm going to try sharp and smooth, which tend to be my go-to, but I'll show you the visual difference that I can see between that and the voxel. So if I go up to, say, 8 or 9 here, with 8, I've got 132,000. I'll see if I can push it to 9 without it crashing. This is, again, asking for it to crash. So with 500,000 faces, I've got a pretty good result here. When I switch to wireframe, one of the things I notice is that again, I've got these artifacts going across here and generally it's not too bad. It's not far off the voxel. I do have some areas here where the polygons Well, generally, I'm quite happy with that. And the sharp tends to do the same thing, except a little bit sharper on the polygon. So again, this is highly dependent on what kind of geometry you have, which method you're going to choose for this. Let's turn off the wireframe and have a look at that. You've got some sharper artifacts here. But again, all this can be smoothed out and sculpted or perhaps shouldn't even be there if you're taking your photos properly in the first place but i kind of wanted this so as i could show you some of these remeshing techniques i think i'm going to settle for the voxel and the original settings which i think i had a 0 0.5 for this did i let's see 0 0.05 maybe yeah that's the one that's giving me about uh, let's try 0 0.04 again that's giving me about 180,000 faces, and I'm just going to go ahead and apply that and maybe save off my file. Make a copy of this first and then save off my file here. The next thing I'm going to look at is this Exocide Quad Remesher, which is a plugin for Blender, which is by the same person that makes a Z Remesher in ZBrush, and it's quite affordable $110. Well, I don't know how you, if you would class that as affordable or not, but the option for me, $16 for three months, seems to be quite good for the headache of using some of the uh, other retopology methods. And this one works really well. You basically just download it and you go into Blender and add it in your preferences here as a zip install there and then activate it. And what, once that's on there, you'll see it down here. So I'm going to choose 60,000 faces and I'm just going to go with remesh it. You can do a density here where you can control where the quads are going to be in here but i'm not going to go over that now i'm just going to go through the fully automated method and I just click remesh we have a little progress bar down here which tells us how long it's taking and what i have now is 65,000 faces but a far nicer flow of polygons there. i'll just turn on wireframe quickly you can see here and something that should subdivide very well and if you look here we've got a nice topological flow of quads here which works very well and very smoothly for me. I'm just going to show you ZBrush's own version, which is 
relatively new and it can be accessed down here under remesh and it's called quadriflow mesh and i'm just going to click that and show you what you can do here i'm going to choose 60,000 faces for that as well this does have a tendency to crash but let's give it a go and see how long it takes so there's the result there after quite a bit longer we do have quads which is great but we don't seem to have the smoothness and coherence of the topology flow that we got from the exercise side. So for me, the exercise side is a winner. Not only is it faster, the quadriflow also crashes for me quite a few times. So we can see here some of the kind of weird errors this one produces, as opposed to the exercise here which just seems to follow the polygons better and again i can go on from here to do further sculpting or some uving or anything or just throw the low poly mesh in if we're used dealing with characters or something like that we can control the quad flow and that's the reasoning for doing this so generally quadri flow is good but for me exercise is definitely a winner here and in my opinion and i'm not paid to say this i think it's worth splashing out just to give you that edge over your topology i'll turn off the wireframe here and you can see yourself we do have some sharp artifacts on the quadriflow there and smoother generally with the exercise so back into zbrush here and we have the mesh that we decimated earlier and in zbrush we have this excellent remeshing tool called dynamesh we put our target polygons in here i'm going to choose about 300 hit dynamesh and instantly no need to fix manifold edges, it's just closed it. Again, it's made a bit of a mess underneath and inside the shoe, but that's cool. Uh, 143,000 points. If we switch on our wireframe here, we see that it's given us a better result than what ZBrush has. We don't have any of the weird artifacts that we had at the bottom. Uh, everything seems to be quads and generally not too bad. And one of the really cool things about this tool is you can go in here and sculpt and cut out holes, which I'll show you very quickly. And once we've cut out that hole, we can remesh again and it'll instantly fill in that area for us. We could do this numerous times and remesh again. And it just starts to fix some of these mistakes down here. We can just do that anytime, just doing some very quick subtractive brushes here and smoothing, and I just keep remeshing. And the technique generally in ZBrush is that just to do sculpt and then remesh, and it just distributes those polygons for us again. As you see here, if we end up with stretched polygons, we just do the remesh, and it redistributes them again for us. a bit carried away there i've managed to soften the outside of it but once we're kind of done with this the equivalent to exercise exercise or the original z remesher is the other option which gives us a sort of targeted edge flow like we saw in exercise i'm going to choose a target poly count for this and again for things like characters and stuff this is great because you can actually specify some of the edge flows in here some of the areas that you want the edges to flow i hit the z remesh there and again, relatively faster, 54,000 points. If I turn on the polygons there, other than the mistakes I've made on the outside, there, it's moving too much. It doesn't look too bad at all. I could just go in here and sculpt with far more ease in here now, having this nice polygon flow that we have here. So all in all, what would I say? I would say that the winning combination probably is a mixture of both, to be honest. With sculpting, uh, ZBrush still has the edge i think it just seems to work a little bit smoother with polygons with remeshing exercise and z remesh are on par dynamesh for me is still a really powerful and excellent tool for the as you saw for the ability to keep re-dynameshing and re-dynameshing to close holes and fix the poly as you sculpt and i don't know of a blender equivalent yet but as i have kind of abandoned uh, z brush for blender largely due to the interface i still think blender wins and i'm watching for future releases to see what they come up with in, with the sculpting and the remeshing to see if i will go back to zbrush again or not thank you very much for watching and any advice or any tips of your own or if i did anything badly or if you need any help just hit me up in the comments and subscribe thank you and i'll see you soon for another video